Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to introduce you to a useful function called the dot product. You might have learned about it in math class, and it has some surprising applications in game programming. Let's get right into it and look at an implementation. The dot product takes two vectors and returns a float. The formula is pretty simple. Multiply the matching components of each vector and add everything together. At first glance, it doesn't seem very useful, right? But it turns out this function also equals the length of each vector times the cosine of the angle between each vector. By rearranging, you can get a few useful functions just from this fact, like the length of a vector and the angle between two vectors. When efficiency matters, consider using the dot product of a vector with itself instead of its length. You'll save on a square root operation. Here's a graph showing how the dot product changes as I move two vectors around. Notice when both vectors are unit vectors, meaning their lengths equal 1, their dot product is 1 when they're pointing in the same direction, 0 when they're perpendicular, and negative 1 when they're parallel but opposite. OK, so how can you use the dot product in your code? In the shader graph, Unity provides a dot node. There's also the built-in dot function in HLSL code. In C Sharp, you can use Vector2 dot dot, Vector3 dot dot, or the new mathematics packages Math dot dot. They're all equivalent. What are some practical uses of the dot product? In shaders, use it to calculate lighting. Diffuse lighting takes the dot product of the light direction and a surface normal to see how much light affects a pixel. Specular lighting is similar, except it uses the dot product of a reflected light approximation and the view direction. These calculations are the foundation of most lit shaders. The dot product is also useful when working with physics. For instance, when a projectile reaches its maximum height, the dot product of its velocity direction and acceleration direction will equal zero. Additionally, on collision, take the dot product of the projectile's velocity and the impact surface's normal to approximate the amount of damage that might occur. In gameplay, the dot product provides an easy way to test if an object is in a character's field of view. Take the dot product of the character's view direction and a unit vector pointing towards the hiding object. If the result is greater than some threshold, then the character sees the object, or at least you know that it's worth executing a raycast to test if it is. This technique also can tell you if an object is behind another. The dot product will be negative in that case. And that just about scratches the surface of the dot product. I hope that this introduction has given you some ideas about how to utilize this useful function. Please tell me some of your own ideas about it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. If you like game development, consider subscribing. I post weekly content here, including shader tutorials. I'd also really appreciate it if you could like this video. It encourages YouTube to recommend it to others, and it really helps me out. I also want to thank all my patrons for their continued support, and give a shout out to Lee Fenzo, my next gen patron. Thank you so much. If you'd like to view videos early, download project files, or vote in topic polls, consider joining my Patreon. But please don't feel pressured, I appreciate you watching this video at all. Thanks again for watching, and make games.